Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Crown and today we are going to have some more stories that I hope that you will enjoy. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go! Hey guys, hope you're doing well. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit off today, but sadly I got a nasty cold. That is mainly going after my throat. So I hope you don't mind the boogeyman narrating your stories today. Thank you for understanding and let's get to it. First story, entitled Mother at Enemy Midwest. Last year for my 16th birthday, I asked my parents to go to Enemy Midwest 21. If you don't know what Enemy Midwest is, it's basically a three-day anime convention in the Midwest held north of Chicago, Illinois, usually from July 7th to 10th. Anywho, I also received that trans necklace and flag, which I have to this day, but with my first day being in May I had time to prepare some cosplay outfits. I quickly became fond of Overhaul, an MHA My Hero Academia, villain, and Eren Jaeger, the main character of Attack on Titan. They were both from my favorite Japanese anime. Note, this was a three-day convention, but I chose to go just as I am. It was before Illinois went into the whole COVID ordeal. And with it being my first day, I had a choice to bring a friend, of course. I opted for that option. I had chosen my best friend Alex, 15 male, not real name, but they were also a fan of MHA. I had asked Alex if he wanted to go with my mother and I, and I completely expected him to go ask his parents and get their permission, but he said, I already plan to go this year. Let me ask my parents if I could go with you instead of them. I was astonished that no matter what his parents said, he'd be going anyway. It's a win-win. His parents said that was fine because that meant two fewer tickets that they had to purchase. My mother, Alex, and I drove up to Raymond, Illinois on the 6th, so we had enough time to get settled down in our two-bed hotel room. It was two beds and a couch. I went for the couch since I was spending more time on my couch at home than my own bed. Wasn't that bad on a couch either. We planned to go out to eat when we got there. But since where Alex and I wanted to go was literally down the street from the hotel, we went to the hotel first and walked down to Morton's Steakhouse. Note, as we pulled up to the hotel, the convention center was contently across the street. At the steakhouse is where we first met our entitled mother and her nice kid. We were getting seated and yes, I had my trans necklace on, but we sat next to the door so some people could see it but they were not disgusted as our entitled mom. Anyways, 15 to 20 minutes passed by before the entitled mother walked into the restraint with her child. Maybe 13 or 14, I'm bad at telling ages by looks. The entitled mother must have seen my necklace and lit out a loud and over-exaggerated, oh! When I heard that, I thought it was because of the line, but there was no line. She asked the waitress, that was seating everyone. Can you not sit us near them? She pointed at me specifically. This conversation won't be exact, but I believe it will be close. Ma'am, the only two seated tables that we have available is the table next to them. Now I'm going to ask you if you were going to sit there or leave because once we see the last party, we aren't going to. Then the entitled mother cuts her off. No, I demand to be seated somewhere else. Now, ma'am, I am going to ask you to leave or take a seat. The entitled mother's daughter was already walking to the table, so she followed suit. Now, I had liked my PFF for a while, so I wanted to ask Alex to be my boyfriend. I popped the question, and he said yes. My mother was crying tears of joy, and the entitled mother was just disgusted. Ah, you're disgusting. Lady, please leave us alone, please. No, your child is disgusting, and I don't want him to give it to my daughter as he did with him. Points to Alex. So leave. 
Now I'm going to point out that this part is a bit fuzzy so some stuff isn't exact. My mom tells her, now lady you don't have to tell us to leave. If you're so disgusted, then you leave. She was lucky that our food was here. I was being set on the table. So the entitled mother sat down and dealt with it for a while. I thought this was the last conversation that I would have with this lady. But I was wrong. My mother went to the bathroom so I wanted to move across the table to sit next to Alex. Cause why not? Now listen to me, young man. You aren't going to sit next to him, you slur. She proceeded to grab me in what I can only assume is to throw me outside of the front counter and have the waitress or manager do so. But as I said I can only assume, I quickly grabbed her wrist and threw her to the ground. And the recent commotion that we had raised brought the attention of a manager or supervisor. Oh boy, they only saw me throwing her to the ground. So with the supervisor's knowledge, is that I attacked the lady. Soon later, after my mom came out of the bathroom, a couple of police officers came walking through the door. I knew the whole ordeal, to put my hands up and face away from them, but I did not until I was told to do so, because I did not know if I was going to have to, and maybe as some of you guessed, I was cuffed, escorted to one of their cars. They wanted to get statements and watch CCTV footage. And since I was the only one in a car, I gave my statement last. I told him everything that you just read before the officers walked in, with the other statements that were pointing at the entitled mother as the aggressor and the CCTV pointing in the same direction. Now I had informed the officers that was dealing with my cuffs that I was 16, and they asked for my ID to prove that, and yes it did. Again, I thought this was the last run in that I'd have with her. Wrong once more. The first day of the convention started and we had gone through and bought some manga. Japanese books on which most anime is based off of. Plushies, puppets, and cosplay items. I had conveniently encountered the entitled mother's daughter. She asked me where I got my plushies. I had to take off my mask to speak. I pointed and that was the end of it. Wrong. The entitled mother saw the nice kid and I talking and ran up to me and smacked me. You're not going to talk to my daughter, you pedophile. Her daughter did not have her nonsense again after what had happened the night before. I whispered to myself, which you call me a pedophile, you were nearly arrested for assault of a minor. But she apparently heard me. I'm not such a thing. You assaulted me. Oh, I swear this woman is mental. And again, we caused the scene and caught the attention of security. Luckily, I wasn't put into handcuffs. The statement again pointed to her and was good enough to call the PD. To sum up this story because it's long, and I don't want to make it any longer as I'm tired, the entitled mother was arrested for assault of a minor and was banned from the convention for the following three years. We got free tickets to the maid cafe, my choice, and were given free merchandise for some nearby venues that encountered the whole situation. Best three days of my life. Next story. I sued my HOA in one. Neighbors and members of the HOA went door to door soliciting votes to ban rentals in a the neighborhood. They got the required two thirds votes needed to change the CCRs. They failed to mail out any notifications. I don't live in this neighborhood. I had agreed to let my tenant out of his lease one month early since I was planning on selling and he already had purchased a new home. And I had the house under contract. The HOA president posted on the neighborhood Facebook page that everyone had received the proposed amendments. Not the case. When I was four days from the closing, they announced the new restrictions on the Facebook page. As a result, the buyer backed out as it was an investor that would not be able to rent for the home for at least 24 months. I felt like I had a good case based on the fact that I would have kept the tenant until the end of the lease. If I had received notice of the upcoming CCR changes, I filed a case in small claims and the HOA's insurer settled for the full amount of one month's rent. I posted a picture of the settlement check on the Facebook page with a note to the HOA president. Up yours was red hot poker. Needless to say, it didn't stay up long, but 
The victory was very sweet indeed. Next story. Hug hating mama. So I have an aunt who will call Louise, age 45. The woman hates motorcycles. And I mean hate. She hates him so much that she actually tried to get people to sign a petition to ban motorcycles during bike week every year for 20 years. She's even trying to get this popular bike shop closed. Jokes on her, they added a diner and business is doing well. So imagine her utter rage when her daughter at the age of 19, 23 now, bought a motorcycle to get around her campus easier. Jamie needed a vehicle to get around her college town for school and work. And that bike was the only thing available. The second Louise found out she threatened to cut her off if she didn't get rid of it. Jamie told her flat out that she needed a ride, and unless her parents were willing to front the money for a dependable car, the bike stays. Hal 41 sided with Jamie on this. They didn't have the money to help her with a car. Plus, the town wasn't that big. As long as she didn't go on highways with it or drive it irresponsibly, she could. Louise screamed her rage at everyone she could. She finds that only trashy people drive motorcycles. Only trash women would enjoy being on them. That she's gonna get herself drugged up and kicked out because that's what happens to bikers. Jamie hasn't even gotten a ticket since she got it. Louise warned her that if she ever saw the bike in her driveway, she would have it towed. So Jamie would stash the bike at a friend's house when she was home. Well, bike week came and went. And Jamie stopped by her folks' home to see them. Cousin had apparently forgotten the threat her mom made. Louise left the room and called the tow truck without Jamie knowing. She tried to distract Jamie long enough for the tow truck to get there, so it could be taken away before her daughter realized what was happening. Thankfully, her dad was just taking out the garbage and spotted the truck and saw it backing in to get the bike. Hal yelled for Jamie to get out there and stop the tow truck guys from getting to the bike. Jamie came racing out and got onto her bike and presented ownership papers. Thankfully, these were the good towing companies in town, so they backed off. Louise was pissed and demanded that they take the bike anyway. They didn't and left. Jamie told me that she didn't yell or even argue with her mother about it. She should have remembered the threat but didn't. Plus, Louise would probably just argue in circles and Jamie did not want that. Instead, she decided to just leave, saying goodbye to her dad and a nice try to her mom and she left. Helen and Louise did argue about it. Jamie said that dad kicked her out of the house for a week and she stayed with her parents. I told Jamie that if it had been me, I would drive by their house every time I came into town. Good thing that I'm not a pity witch then. What was her reply? Next story. Do not intimidate your roommates. I-33 male currently live with three roommates, B, S, and T. B decided two months ago that she was unhappy and was going to move out after seven months of no complaints. This shortly changed after she looked around and realized how good her rent was for the size of her room. It was massive. She became very toxic after this, demanding strict rules, accusing us of stealing and trespassing in her room, and trying to intimidate us during encounters in common spaces. She even tried to change the proportion of utilities paid based on how often we each had guests over. We live in a city with very strong tenant protections. It is very difficult to evict someone. All we can do is ask her to leave, which we have done multiple times. Cue the pityness. S is a master tenant. If he moves out, everyone else has to move or sign a new agreement was a landlord at a new rent level. ST and I decided to stick it to her and move out. We waited until the last day we could tell her, giving her 30 days to find a place. P was speechless. Not only that, I found through our landlord's employee that her credit was bad and she will not be considered for a new lease. It continues. P started receiving letters for the unemployment office last week. In a span of a couple of weeks, she picked an unnecessary fight and lost a place to live and her job. Cosmic retribution at its best. T and I found a new place yesterday and will be out of here in 7 days. I cannot wait to tell B to get lost as I take the Wi-Fi router, turn off the internet in the apartment and block her number. And now she's moving out as well. 
The next story is an update to a story we read before, and it was titled My Friend's Mom Pushed Me Into a Table Saw. First, Kylan and I have made up. It wasn't his fault for what his mom did, and I get that. Secondly, after telling the entitled mom's husband about what actually has been going on, and him getting pissed at the entitled mother, he's taking me into the station to get things sorted out and asking how I want to move forward. I haven't really decided what I'd like to do at the moment, but I'm leaning towards just money for compensation or something. The entitled mother two days ago also showed up at my house demanding for me, but I wasn't there at the time. But when I did get back home, I saw the entitled mother standing there waiting for me. My mom said she stayed there the whole time waiting for me. And I went up to ask her what's going on and why she's here. And in response, I got a huge glob spat in my face and a whole bunch of yelling. Honestly, it took me a lot of restraint to not yell at her back, but I just calmly told her to get away from my mom and my house. And eventually she did. Another update. Finally, after tons of comments, I'm going to take this to court. The entitled mother's husband has given me a good injury attorney that I can talk to, and my mom needs to help me fill the documents out once I get there. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.